It was recently Easter, which means my closet looks like it survived the tornado from the whiz in order to find an outfit. But once I actually found one and went, it had me wondering, why didn't I choose to wear a church hat? And if I did choose to wear one, the only options that I had were a church hat that I used for a horror short film I filmed last year, a winter hat that had gone unused all winter, and a cowboy hat that I plan on wearing to the Cowboy Carter tour. Nevertheless, if I had to go to Easter service hatless, church hatless, I at least had to know the history. And thankfully, it got really interesting. I'm Taylor Cassidy, and this is Black Girl Magic Minute. We need black queens on the TV screen and behind the scenes. Mother Native women know what that really means. You need to be seen. They run the world full throttle. Pretty black faces more than a model. Get black magic girl, put it in a bottle. Come on, girl, it's your cue. Not potential in you. Don't show it. The extravagant church hats that we see and know today are from church crowns, which have biblical context to the Bible verse 1 Corinthians 11, 4 through 6. Every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. It is the same as having her head shaved. For if a woman does not cover her head, she might as well cut her hair off. But if it is a disgrace for a woman to have her hair cut off or her head shaved, then she should cover her head. Yeah, I saw you at church. Yeah, I've heard the verse. So when you say approaching the altar just as Cameron is sacrilegious, what do you mean? Wearing religious headwear is common throughout so many different kinds of cultures and especially with church hats in the South. But for this video, we're just going to be talking about the black roots of it and the significance of it in the black community as a whole. So first, what makes a church hat? Here are the unwritten rules from Craig Murberry and Michael Cunningham's book, Crowns, Portraits of Black Women in Church Hats. Don't wear a hat wider than your shoulders. Don't wear a hat that is darker than your shoes. If your hat has feathers, make sure they are never bent or broken. Sequins don't look good in the daytime. Easter hats should be white, cream, or pastel, even if it's still cold outside. For a look that is both elaborate and demure, try a chapel veil. This year's winner and still champ is Sister Rochelle. <laughs> Okay, okay, I got it down. But why is it so associated with the black church in particular? Let's go do some research. <sighs> okay, so basically conditions in slavery did not allow black people to express themselves. And you know how individual we are? Yeah, it, it was given we weren't able to do a lot of that at all. Because plantation owners limited how much we were able to be ourselves, they limited how much we were able to come together as a community by taking away how much religion we could express, how much of our own cultures that we took with us from Africa we could express. But could that stop us? Hell no! Nah. Plantation owners usually kept Sunday for black people to attend church. So it became a time where all black people, but especially black women, were able to express their individualism, donning church hats. They would use flowers, anything they could find, and it became a fashion statement and a statement of tradition in the black church. <sighs> but that wasn't enough. I had to go deeper. I know that all of our creativity and our elaborate styles didn't just start because of a Bible verse or because of a reaction to enslavement and wanting to wear a Sunday best, so I had to go back. I learned that before enslavement, our ancestors and African cultures used headwear not only for religious practices, but for status, coming of age, and practicality, and beauty. In West Africa, there's the Kufi, which stands for Pan-African pride, Islamic cultures, and to show status in the family. South Africa has the Zulu hat, which is originally part of marriage traditions. And there's also the Gele, which is my favorite, that is originally also used for marriage traditions, but also for special special occasions as well. With head wraps and headpieces in general being such a large expression of creativity inside and outside of the church, I'm realizing that the church hat isn't just a symbol of faith, it's a symbol of our roots and our heritage. Marbury from the same book that we were just talking about in a Southern Living article says this. There's an important cultural element at play too, he notes. 
African Americans sometimes think we are severed from our African culture, our heritage because of slavery, says the author. But there are a lot of things we do without realizing they're connected to the motherland. Cats are one of them. Many African societies believe that the soul is housed in the head, not the heart, and therefore you adorn the head as a way of honoring it he says. And so church continued to be a place in the black community for us to go and express our individualism, which there weren't a lot of places for us to do that anyway. In fact, your Sunday best became a symbol of dignity. And that's why so many women during the civil rights movement wore their Sunday best and their church hat while marching. And so if these hats hold so much power, so much heritage, so much culture, why aren't we wearing them anymore? I mean, imagine showing up to the function in a special occasion church hat. Yes, yes. Who's that? Oh my gosh! Is that a church hat? Oh my gosh, this girl got a church hat! Oh! Oh, she posting it down! It's not even Sunday! Wow! Bring it to the altar! 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 Turn around! Oh. Following the height of the civil rights movement, the black power movement was strong, okay? I'm talking Afros, I'm talking Black Panthers, I'm talking Pan-Africanism. And with that came many black people, many young black people, questioning the systems and traditions that past generations carried on. They started questioning them and wondering if in any way it could be linked to white supremacy. They projected Africa always in a negative light. Jungles, savages, cannibals, and why then naturally it was so negative until you, it was negative to you and me. And you and I began to hate it. We didn't want anybody to tell us anything about Africa, and much less call us an African. And in hating Africa and hating the African, we ended up even hating ourselves. So this came with the rejection of pressing your hair, for example, embracing what made you completely and utterly black and free instead of suppressing it to appease white people. And so church hats went on trial for one, being allegedly anti-feminist and two, for allegedly being part of the black bourgeoisie, which this is what that means. In her 1996 New York Times article, Lena Williams describes it like this. Then came the radical 1960s and I, a self-avowed black power militant with a new Afro hairstyle that matched my new establishment attitude, rebelled against the scriptures of God, church and country. Hats were dismissed as symbols of oppression for women and status symbols of the black bourgeoisie. Church hats I once wore with pride and from which I painstakingly plucked every speck of lint were covered in tissues and stored in my mother's attic. What does wearing a hat and shoes too tight for comfort in a starchy dress have to do with my faith in God? I once asked my mother in an unprovoked fit of defiance. She never answered me directly, choosing instead to let go and let God, as she liked to say. And so the tradition of church hats became less and less commonly practiced in the whole of the black community. Once again, I have to say, the culture is still very much vibrantly alive in the South, but as a whole for the black community, a lot of young people aren't wearing church hats anymore. But all this to say to me, in all of the research that I did, church hats give a statement past a religious or traditional one. To me, it speaks to the creativity of our ancestors even when everything was stripped away from them, even as they tried to our identities. Even when it looked like we had nothing, we do what we always do, remix that <gasps> It's Easter, how dare you? Whoa, 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 I was gonna say remix and shine. Oh. Well, actually, the other one rolls off the tongue a little bit better, so I don't know. What? Church hats are the spirit of our culture and hold a history of pride. Plus, if a lady complimented my outfit and she's wearing this, I know I ate. Now, before you go, there are some women that have been absolutely winning this week. Black women. Tenacity, take it away. W-I-N-N-I-N-G Round one. W-I-N-N-I-N-G Call me Akilah cause I be winning. Shining so bright these haters can't face me. Proud of my blackness so I can keep rising. It's a win that I hold my head high. It's a win that my dreams reach the sky. It's a win cause I think I'm so fly. And I will succeed, I've made up my mind. W-I-N-N-I-N-G 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 Round of winning. Round of winning.
Now, if you're like me and the Easter celebrations have been having you say, "Ooh, we had a time last night, you can perk up with some black and bold coffee. There are black owned business this week. This is unsponsored. I have some of their chai loose leaf tea and I really, really enjoy it a lot. And they just gifted me like a bunch of new stuff. So thank you so much to Black and Bold and go check them out. If you wanna see more Black Girl Magic Minute, you can go onto my YouTube. There's a whole playlist. And if you wanna to listen to me more, I'm on TikTok radio. And if you leave a question in the comments, I will answer you on my own personal segment, Taylor's DMs, which comes on SiriusXM every Monday. I don't just report here. I'm also on Nick News on Nickelodeon where you can find all kinds of stories, educational stories where we are out on the field just for kids. And if you like black history videos like this, you can go on my TikTok and my Instagram where I have over 50 black history videos with my series, Fast Black History. Thank you so much for watching. And before you go, take a deep breath. You made it through the week and I am so proud of you. And remember that they call it black girl magic because it is unbelievable how beautiful your spirit is. So go out, keep your head up, keep your dreams up and keep rising. Round one. Hey. Focus. 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 Focus.